Hey everybody, once again, this is Aaron Woodson, or A.A. Ryan, like some like to call me. Continue to like, subscribe, and share. Comment. Here is a 72 Cutlass Supreme I just took in. I'm about to put QA1 suspension on the front, tubular control arms. I'm uh, eventually end up upgrading the cooling system on it. I'm not sure how soon we're going to do that. But this car is overall is in pretty nice condition. Um, it's got the sport mirrors on it, bucket seats, no console, and it runs pretty good, uh, especially considering most of these cars barely run. I may have some brake issues. We may even work on those. But like I said, continue to like, subscribe, share, comment, and uh, follow along as we build this suspension on this color and mechanical. And we'll go from there as far as uh, painting all of that. I probably won't paint this car myself because I don't want it, it takes up too much of my time, but I will recommend him to a good reputable shop that will do a good job on it. Okay, we're here now with the 72 Cutlass Supreme. Like I said, you can't mention Cutlass in Indianapolis without mentioning Aaron Woodson. We're about to get to it. Got the jack, two jack stands. About to do a full suspension on it. And um, a brake up, and what we've added to the list is a brake upgrade and a rear end. I'm actually waiting on the FedEx man now for some parts, but I'm going to get started today. Um, he has a 350 rocket in it, and um, we're probably going to run with that engine because it runs good. It's been rebuilt not too long ago. But um, take the wheels off, put the jack stand on it, and get after it. Okay, as you see, this car has drum brakes on them. We're going to get rid of those. I've got the tie rod disconnected. I'm moving on to the shocks. And then the stabilizer links. They have been replaced not too long ago. And one way I know is because they're the threaded end is facing down. And a lot of people don't know from the factory the threaded end faces up. But that's gonna make it a little bit easier just to get that off. Typically I cut them off. I usually have a problem with the shocks on the top nut. It just wants to spin, the whole ride wants to spin. I've uh, gotten it done different ways by um, putting pressure on it and it'll come loose. I've cut the nut, but on this car, saw something very interesting that made it real easy and made it not a problem. I kind of dread doing these shocks, these front ends for this reason, but this one just changed the whole my whole mind on it. If you look, Right there on the shock mount, it has two nuts on it. And what that does, it makes the top nut a locking nut. What it also did, it just made it very easy to come off. I wanna say this is one of the easier ones I've done as far as just putting the ratchet down there in the wrench, just unbolting that and taking it right off. Okay, when I get to this point, I loosen the ball joint and leave some right there for the nut. Then on the top ball joint, the same thing. I put the jack under the coil spring enough under, under the control arm to where it moves a little bit. And I take a big hammer to release the pressure from the coil spring. Um, that way I, the coil spring will never jump out and hit me or do anything dangerous because it has a nut retaining it. If this Lodges this nut up against it where I can't get it off. It gives me enough room to cut it. Well, let's see how this goes. Okay, now as you see, it's jumped out. My pressure is on the jack. I can jack the jack up. And it moves the whole car. I can mount and turn. Finish taking the nut off. Need a little bit more. Okay, now have another wrench here somewhere. Do the top nut the same way. As you see, it's kind of slowly moving down. I have the jack holding the pressure of the coil spring on there.
There it is. See that jumps out like that? I can let my jack down now. When I let the jack down, you can slowly release the coil spring out of there and do it safely. I don't have to worry about anything jumping back and hitting me or anything like that. And I can now, you could use a pry bar, but I'll just, and the coil spring will come out. Okay, I have my brake hose on me. We're changing all of this so I cut the brake hose. And now, the coil spring. There we go. Now I can turn it as safe as possible. Now I can remove the control arms. Okay, that package is there. Got all my parts I've been looking for. Control arms. Uh, not sure what that is there. I think it's a water pump for one of the cars, but you get the picture. Okay, reload it. Have our QA1 stuff. Control arms and our Moog stuff. Ready to get back to work? Make some progress. So now what I have, what I have here is the lower control arm. When they arrive, they will come in two separate boxes. You have the upper, you have the lower. What I like about this particular setup, it comes with the stabilizer link bushings on it. What I do with this particular company i replaced the ball joint immediately before putting them on the car with the moog ball joints the ball joints that come with this particular company aren't the best and i don't mind changing them for the the savings and the customer of the savings a lot of people aren't you know building race cars and wanting to spend a bunch of money on their daily driver so this makes it affordable and doable when you get the added handling from these. I will now install these. Um, I, I change the lower and upper ball joints to Moog. Comes with new control arm bushings, sway bar link bushings, and a cushion down there for the coil spring. With this car, we're gonna do the QA1 coilovers. So I don't know if that's gonna come into play or not. We'll see. And here we have the upper control arms, about ready to install those. And again, I would change the ball joints in them. I put Moog ball joints in them. Like I said, the ball joints that come in this particular brand are no good. Um, I done a set one time and the guy got 50 miles out of them before the ball joints went bad. Lower control arm is in. Both upper and lower control arms installed. Just waiting on the QA1 coilover. Put those in. Um, change the brakes over to disc brakes. And then uh, the steering. Okay, the uh, coilover has to be assembled when you get it. It comes like this. The actual shock. A nut, a locking nut, and a washer, and the coil spring. This warning sticker, anti-seize lubricant must be used. I use it excessively the first time, and I'm going to use it excessively this time, and just clean it off later when I get done. Like I said, you put the lock nut on first, the actual nut, then the washer, the coil spring goes over the top of that. I've got the, this sticker, they really want you to know that. I got adhesive cleaner on it right now because it didn't want to come off. Okay, we'll start with the lock nut. Then it's suggested to use an anti-seize then. And like I said, I the first one I used too much, so I'm gonna use a lot on this one too. I'd rather use too much than too little. I just made probably six or seven lines. 
got real nasty. But like I said, they said void warranty if you don't use it. I don't want no excuses of having any problems. There that is. Except it's excessive. And the actual nut. glove back on. Screw that down. As I say, when I get to the bottom of this, you'll see that I use too much of it. I don't care about that. It costs too much to avoid the warranty over something so easy and simple to do. Something real important I almost forgot to mention. On these control arm bolts, you wanna replace them with new bolts and lock nuts. If you look at this bolt here, it's worn down over the time. And then the, some of the threads are just kinda just smoothed over after 50 years. So make sure you can uh, change your bolts when you do this as well. Upper and lower control arms in. QA1s as stated before. I'm gonna do some with that sway bar. Probably clean it up, maybe change it. We'll see. New bolts. Control arms grease, ready to put the spindle back on. I thought I was gonna put the spindle back on, but I can't until I get the disc brakes. Um, I guess they figure if you're gonna put tubular control arms on, you're not putting disc drum brakes back on, cause it won't fit.